So welcome to week one. Uh, the title that I've chosen for this week is Get Out There and Make Something. Creative Inspiration and Preparations. So I'm sure you're gathering from this title. I'm guessing we're going to be talking a little bit about creativity and the instructors trying to get us excited, stuff like that. And I really do hope that this video will be able to do that for you. So let me just give you a quick overview of some of the things that we're going to talk about and just highlight some things for you. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to try to just briefly explain uh, all of the assignments. Um, not much for week one, of course, you know. And then um, don't forget more specific information because these videos are just overview videos but more specific information is always going to be found in the course and make sure that you're paying attention to what is found on that activities page because that outlines specifically how everything is graded anyway so let's go ahead and get started so I know if you guys have taken classes with me in the past you're very familiar with the web development life cycle um, this is probably the last class within your sequences of classes with me where we're going to talk about it but it's a very important process, um, and I assume that your other classes are talking about it too. I believe that they are, especially if you take in uh, Co-op 2000 with us. Anyway, so the web development life cycle is very important because it really is this entire cycle that kind of helps us think through the entire development of a website. And I want you guys to make sure that you understand here this week one where Co-op 2150 and where Co-op 3150 fit here within this development life cycle. So let's go ahead and jump into the course and I'm going to show you where I discuss these things. Once you get into the week one learning module you have the ability to jump to these different sections here within the table of contents. By clicking on these links you'll take to go straight to the specific page. You can also navigate through the learning module by using the navigational buttons up here in the top left, stop right, sorry. But I'm just going to go ahead and jump us here to the web development life cycle area which is right after the overview page and I'm gonna kind of push this back to give myself a little bit more room so this is basically these next few pages is where I talk about how this class fits within the web development lifecycle okay so uh, here I talk to you specifically about um, how this class is a little bit different because in other classes you know like for example uh, co-op 3120 or 2120 or 2110, these different classes, you know, you're learning about a specific tool, you're learning about a specific thing in terms of learning some new stuff about coding. But the neat thing about this class, let me go ahead and advance to the next page. For example, Design Principles 1 really just kind of grounds you specifically in these two phases where you create your uh, documentation for your website, which we're going to be talking about here in just a second about how we can go forward and implement that. But instead of just being thrown into a course where you're supposed to learn some key concepts or some key things with coding, you actually are going through a planning and an an analyzing phases of building an actual website. So that's really where we are with 21, I'm sorry, with 2150. Now, 20, 3150, which is this course, we now take everything that we did from the planning and anal analysis phases, and then we now use that to as a basis for our design and development. You're probably wondering, well, what about the next two phases? Is that another course? No, it's not. Because, well, basically what I'm kind of trying to get you guys to do within these first few pages of the course is kind of understand the simulation, that I, this, this narrative that I'm kind of trying to weave us through. So I hope you enjoy reading all of that to kind of get you your mind wrapped around how this, this whole process actually works. But the key thing I want you to understand is uh, Design Principles 1 is found here within these first two phases, and then Design Principles 2 is right here in the meat, which is all the fun part, right? The meat of de designing and developing the website. Now don't forget that there could be things, this process is agile, and it, I really wish this image was more uh, circular, but because it, it's not like a waterfall model where you have to do step one, step two, step three, and there's no steps listed here. Anything that happens here could essentially go back and affect something that happens in the analysis phase or something that happens in the planning phase. Um, ideally, that wouldn't happen in this course, and I don't think it necessarily will, but this whole process does have, keep in mind, this process does have this feedback loop. Okay, so everything that you do here builds the next phase is built upon it and then if something happens on here there's always the option that things you might have to go back and keep in mind in a larger web design firm 
a lot of these phases could be happening in tandem where you have a whole team of people working on the planning and analysis areas or just the planning phase and then you have other people within the department go ahead and jumping forward and, and moving forward with design and development based on some things or maybe just getting just the rough sketches of the site laid out that's always possible and this whole process is a very agile process where through the collaboration with the client and their and their team that you can um, design and develop a site that's truly going to meet their needs and the needs of the users and we're going to be talking about that more in depth as we get on uh, through the rest of the class so now you're probably thinking who are our clients well here I paint you this fun picture of uh, of you guys of or, or, you, or if you want to think of it as a group or if you want to think of it just as yourself uh, going to New York and meeting with a client key clients like maybe coca-cola or apple right um, so in design principles one you met your clients they told you about what their needs are and then you then spent the rest of design principles one mocking up for them you know doing this design documentation in the planning analysis phases in preparation for actually coming back home to your parent company to actually implement to actually implement the uh, why is that image not loading? Well, I'll fix that in a minute. To actually implement, I know that image is there. There you go. To actually implement the design and development of the website. But before you can do that, here in 3150, you first have to pitch, well, it's not really the pitch, you have to provide the executive firm uh, of your parent company a whole you know basically your documentation from 2150 but I'm trying to weave it into a way where you can think about what you did in, in 2150 in a more analytical way to kind of get you excited and really wrap your mind around it but you have to pitch that whole idea to the executive firm now that you've come home from New York okay so what you guys need to do is this week we're brainstorming the next week you're finally pitching the idea to the executive firm who's the executive firm well that's just this comic is illustrating there's really nothing to worry about um, so I have four key assignments. Well, they're not really, they're just discussion questions where we're all as a class going to be discussing um, our projects from 2150 to make sure that we wrap our minds around everything that's there to set us up for finally designing and developing the site through the whole weeks three through five. Oh, let me jump to the, I think it's the next page. Yeah. I'm going to move this out of Give us a little bit more room. So like I said, the client consultation in New York that was essentially think about that as like week one of 2150 and then your whole planning and analysis that you did through weeks two through seven of 2150 that was maybe you guys still in New York planning and now and then in week eight you prepared documentation which you then submitted to your instructor in 2150 um, now what you're doing here within this course is you need to be able to uh, brief the executive firm you know of your parent company about what you plan to do in terms of design and development and that's what the whole meat of the course is through weeks three through seven is we're doing that and then finally at the very end of the course you're actually going to pitch the the company in new york your idea pitch them your pitch them your site because it's really not a fully functioning site is it because we're putting it on lab webs and it's not really going to have their content yet but you're kind of pitching them your vision of of the site and that happens in week eight so as I mentioned earlier, a large part of our learning within the course will be um, everybody choosing their own individual things to watch on lynda.com. lynda.com is going to be providing us the demonstrational portion of, of, of the course, which is often missed when you take a course online. And I don't want this course to be just reading a book and taking a quiz and learning how to do some things in code. I want this to be actually learning from an expert. and. Um, since everyone's going to kind of come into this with different expectations for their sites, it would be difficult for me to be creating, you know, this massive library of videos to watch to help teach you uh, these different uh, things that you could do to design and develop your site. So each week I am going to be recommending um, some videos to watch from lynda.com. But then again, that's it's totally up to you to determine uh, which ones you watch. Uh, I would say if you could at least give, you know, 10 15 minutes or 20 minutes just to kind of explore the ones that I've provided for you I think you'll be surprised and you'll probably I have many students have told me that they were actually did end up just watching the ones that I suggested 
Um, each week I'm going to be um, suggesting different ones to watch and this week uh, I have specifically some ones for us to watch and that were the whole goal of them is really to kind of get us thinking creatively preparing for the creative creativity of our term projects brainstorming things like that so the ones that I have asked us to watch are the first one here that's listed here from Bert Monroy he's um, a digital painter and illustrator as the title suggests but once you it's those of you who come from a graphic design background you may know of his work some of you are going to be just so amazed about what this guy can do with Photoshop and Illustrator and even before those programs he was still doing these things in Corel Draw and and, and, and other types of um, applications but anyways he basically uh, this uh, this little mini documentary is going to kind of have him talking through his Times Square uh, stuff that he did with Times Square basically he just took Times Square and he basically painted it all within uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, and it looks so realistic. You guys are really going to be amazed. But just, I just hope that you guys can spend, you know, some time clicking through some of those videos there, and just kind of just gleaming from his creativity, and just kind of getting excited and thinking through, you know, some of the things that you guys might want to do um, for this course. I'm not expecting you guys to be another Bert Juan Monroy, believe me. Uh, he's been doing this for the last 20 years. He's he's definitely a pioneer in his field, and he's still to this day probably the main digital painter that's out there that everyone talks about. And then the second set of videos here, uh, the reason I'm having you watch it, because we really don't get into vectors until the second half of the course after the midterm, but the very beginning of this uh, vector series by um, by Vaughn, uh, chapters one through three, really kind of get us started with thinking about the creative process, preparation, and determining, thinking through the design, the, some of the things that we might want to do uh, for our term project. So I hope those videos, because those are probably more of a, uh, if Bert's videos are more kind of get us thinking about creativity, uh, Vaughn's videos are going to really kind of get us thinking uh, practically about how to get started with that. And I hope that you can kind of take those and think through them in terms of actually, you know, like we're, like I'm trying to encourage us to do is to actually imagine that we're actually working with a real client. So what I'd like to do right now is jump into the course and show you how you can log into Linda and find these videos. So just give me a quick second to do that before we move on to the next topic. So here within the course, um, remember there's those different sections. Under the additional resource section at the end of it, I'm always going to have a link that will jump you to the additional resources where I'm going to list the Linda.com videos that I would suggest you guys checking out. And here this week, you know, I'm going to show you a picture of Bert. Uh, this is actually a, just an image that's taken straight from his documentary of him talking. Basically, you're going to see his office. You're going to listen to him talk about his Times Square project. And down here below is where I list the specific videos that I would suggest you guys watching. And again, you're probably coming in and like, man, I'm not going to sit here and watch two hours worth of video. Some of you guys will. Some of you may choose other videos you want to, to watch. The whole point of all of these resources is really just to kind of get you into Lita and, and learning something geared to what you guys want to learn to do for your term project. And this week, the whole goal, like I said, is to kind of get you thinking creatively and get you prepared uh, for the brainstorming that you're doing this week. And then the brief next week with uh, the brief next week with your executive firm. So, like I said, here's the two different videos that I suggested you guys watching. We're going to search for those just a second by going to the Information Services Workshop link. But I would love to just jump over here and just show you a little bit of Bert's work. Um, you can go to his website. It's just BertMonroy.com. And uh, just this first header here, this is all done within. This is his Times Square project. He did all of this in Photoshop. All of these different images here, none of them this just zooms in none of this is done with is, is taken with a camera like he did all of this himself I mean doesn't look how amazing how much detail and how amazing this is um, so I would suggest you know clicking through some of his videos uh, uh, section here talking about where he works how he got into the business hyper realism and then talking through just a little bit of the Times Square project I think he would be interested in that and glean some inspiration from it and then definitely check out his website um, and then the other uh, video series drawing vector graphs vector graphics from Vaughn and, um, will be great kind of the practical aspect of us getting set up and working with uh, preparing preparing for the creativity that's about to get started in this course so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link and then as soon as I do that I'm then taken to a page on Webster where it says now I can log into the 
uh, Linda training login page. And then when you get there, follow these instructions because basically you're going to have to put in your last name and then you're going to have to put in your student ID followed by the letters EWL. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Putting in my last name and then the letters EWL after my student ID. And then going to launch straight into Linda. And then when you log in, it's going to be listed as IP user. You then have the ability to search for videos by subject or by software. So some of you are going to have uh, want to find videos for GIMP or for Inkscape or for Photoshop and things like that. You can do that by searching through software. You could also search by author. So like we could search for Vaughn or we could search for Bert by author. I'm just going to go ahead and go up here to the search bar and I'm going to type uh, Bert Monroy. And then I'm going to find his Burt Monroy Digital Painter and Illustrator. So this is basically his video. And it's about an hour long, short little documentary of him talking about creativity. And then once you're in here, you can choose which of these that you wanted to watch. So if you just want to watch stuff about the Time Square project, that's fine. The key is I just want you to watch something. It's going to open up. So you could watch the, that segment of the documentary. Uh, the other video is you could search for drawing vector graphics. It just takes a second. And it's right here. Now his whole video is two hours and 30 minutes and I'm suggesting you guys watching chapters one, two, and three. And let me see, I mean, so that's 18 minutes plus 18 minutes plus 8 minutes. So that's, you know, what? I'm terrible at math off the top of my head. So that's what, almost what, 40 minutes of, of video? Um, so 40 minutes of video plus the what I'm asking you to watch a bird. So that's about an hour, uh, about, you know, let's say, you know, by the time you eat a sandwich and, you know, have your, have, have your beer, I mean, what's that probably, what, about two hours of video? Consider that, plus watching my videos and doing your readings. Well, the readings is, you know, outside the course, of course. Um, because you wouldn't do that with me in the classroom. So, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, basically fill up your four hours with me on a Monday night if you were to think of you were taking this class face to face. So, again, the whole purpose of this segment here of this little uh, lecture video this week is I just want to show you where your resources are and how you um, can get started using them on Linda.com. Definitely, I suggest just watching, getting started watching these. I think you'll be surprised and you'll want to finish watching them. And then also check out Linda in terms of uh, just searching and seeing what else is out there. If any of you are preparing for a job interview uh, or preparing for the job market, things like that, I would definitely check out what, what's here underneath the business skills area. But that, that'll be a little treat for you guys later or for those of you who want to check it out this week. Um, next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the different image types and things that we are going to be working with in the course, just to kind of give you a broad overview of them. So like we were just checking out within lynda.com, we're going to be using it to learn about the uh, to, to get more of a demonstrational aspect of the course so you're not just learning from your textbook. Learning just from your textbook is fine, um, but I do think that having uh, some sort of demonstrational portion so you can learn how to use these computer-based programs uh, is very beneficial and it's definitely needed within this course, so I have suggested resources for that. Here I'm just going to give you just a broad overview, and I am going to bring this uh, this page up at a couple of different times within the course just to kind of remind us uh, how we can use these leverage these different programs you know, for our benefit. Um, in terms of graphic design and development, um, the first half of the course we're truly working mainly with bitmaps. Those are basically when you think of you think of photographs. Uh, a bitmap uh, consists of an image that's based on pixels. Um, at the second half of the course, we work with vectors. That's an image of a mathematical. It's basically a mathematical equation that's filled with a solid color. Um, there's different advantages to both, and you're going to be learning about those when you are. Uh, reading within your book and the different videos you're watching. But the first half of the course is bitmaps, the second half of the course uh, is mostly consisted of vectors. Um, the ideal program for that, if you uh, have the ability to have access to it, would be Photoshop for bitmap images and Illustrator for the creation of vectors. There are, there are alternate programs of, uh, for those um, that are free and where which majority of the students who take this class do utilize, which would be GIMP, for uh, bitmaps and Inkscape for vectors. And your book is going to talk about the use of all four of these programs. 
Um, your book doesn't get into the use of fireworks, though, because fireworks is something that's only been around for like the last five years. Um, fireworks is, is Adobe's uh, bridge between uh, to have a program that's both suited for both bitmap and vector. Um, now, keep in mind, it's, uh, it's, it's an attempt, so in my mind, it's not an expert at doing both of those things. So if, I had, if you had a certain amount of money and you needed to, to choose just one program, I would say Fireworks would be the one to spend your money on. There is no alternate version for Fireworks. Um, but for the average web, design, uh, web designer and developer, Fireworks honestly would work just fine. For those of you who are wanting to do some more sophisticated things with bitmaps and photographs, you're going to have to have a more involved program like Photoshop and the same thing for those of us when we're creating our logos and stuff with vectors um, but then again um, I've had many students who do just fine by just using fireworks through the entire course it's really up to you and your needs but I just wanted to kind of just give you a broad overview of these different technologies what they're used for and talk to you about the expectations of it's not required for students to have the Adobe Suite in this course many students are going to do just fine with GIMP and Inkscape. I've even had some students who've done a lot just by using Microsoft Paint or Corel Draw, different things like that. So, anyways, next I'm going to chat with us about uh, kind of like the main purpose of this week is to kind of really get us thinking creatively about uh, this course and our term projects. So before I finish up this presentation by getting into the nitty-gritty of what exactly is due this week, I wanted to try to uh, take one last moment to really inspire us to uh, think creatively and get excited and motivated about what you're about to be doing here in this course. And the purpose of this image here is to kind of show just a great distribution of what I see every single time when I teach this course. I always end up having um, most of the students get C's and B's. And keep in mind, definitely take a look at the syllabus where I outline all the specific ways that we're all going to be graded. But generally speaking, most of the students in the class get C's and B's. And I, obviously, I would expect most of you to get B's and A's, but you know it really just depends on how well you participate and how well you do in your term project. Now, when you so now your term project, while I'm inspiring us to do to think creatively with it, um, I'm not grading you on creativity. Um, if you meet the minimum requirements for the term project, you essentially could get you know uh, an A or B, perhaps. You know, it's like, did you do this? Yes or no. Um, at the bottom of your syllabus, I outline specifically how that's all graded. But in terms of creativity, you know, this isn't really graded, but we know it when we see it. And the create, creative aspect of the course is really what's going to help you to have that um, term project that's really going to be a nice professional piece for your professional portfolio. So I would hope that uh, you would really think about how to really truly think creatively with your project. And, and like I show here with the light bulb, you know, it really ends up often being, you know, a small amount of students who are really, 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 really trying to get in depth and really think creatively with their project. And I, I would hope that, that this curve would be more skewed toward, uh, toward the light bulb rather than just having um, the majority of the class, like, averagely, you know, doing, uh, doing the term project, if that, if that makes sense. So uh, definitely ask me questions about this or, or if you have any mixed feelings about this philosophy. But I'm just trying to kind of just show you just generally, as with most courses, you know, the average grade distribution of what, what's in the course and how the course is, is graded. So now let's chat about specifically about your activities that we are assigned to do this week. I'm asking you to read chapters one and two from the uh, Painting in the Web books by, um, by Shelley Powers. Uh, I would expect you uh, to have both of those chapters read, and we are going to have a quiz over those chapters next week. Um, if you don't have your book yet, feel free to access them uh, within the course in the, under the textbook key reserves area. I have suggested videos for you guys to watch on lynda.com, but then again, I'm not testing you over those videos, nor will I ever know if you ever really watch those videos. But I would expect everybody in here really eager to learn and watch this video. Whether you watch the ones that I've suggested for you, or perhaps you're watching some other ones that you found for yourself. And as we get to week three, through, weeks three through seven, you're actually going to be sharing with a partner which videos you're watching to kind of you know help hold us all accountable that we are continuing our learning. And then again, you can all come up with things, resources outside of Lynda.com and outside of this course that you're using to guide your learning as well. And that's totally fine. I just want to see that everybody's learning something new and applying it in the design and development of their term projects. In terms of discussion, we have two major discussions this week, which is really the meat 
of our assignments um, this week, which is uh, the executive brief brainstorming, which is in two parts, planning analysis, and similar sites. And I'm going to talk about those in more in depth in just a second. The only assignment that I have this week, whenever you see an assignment, this is an opportunity for you and me to work together individually so I can give you some personalized feedback. All I'm asking you to do is to share with me your term project, your basically your documentation that you created for from 2150, and then talk with me about um, concerns that you may have about it, ways that you think that you may be wanting to branch out of that mold that you were in a term ago, or maybe even a year ago, or more um, from what you did uh, when you took 2150. So I'll talk about more of that in just a second. And then I also have listed here extra credit. Each week I give everyone an opportunity to earn some extra credit. You, uh, I can have two students sign up for it each week, and I would encourage to have two of you sign up for it this week. This week is the only week that I give you an extra credit resource that's not a video. So this year I actually have a blog post of a, a fellow creative who talks about and tries to inspire us to get out there, get us all web designers out there and make something. So he actually talks through his creative process to inevitably make the website Dribble, which I'm guessing many of you may be familiar with. Um, if you're not, definitely check out that blog post, Check, get out there and make something, and then also check out Dribble. I think you'll really be um, excited and inspired by his creative process to inevitably come up with that site. Um, but in terms of the extra credit, what you're asked to do is to go and first let me know, hey Dave, I want to do the extra credit. And then I say, hey, move forward, you're fine, go ahead and do it. So what you do is you provide the class an executive summary of what that resource has. So I think I list in the course like 100, 150 words or something. So provide us a brief executive summary. Feel free to give us some bullet points. But then, um, and you're doing all this in discussion area, and then at the end of that, ask the class an engaging question to kind of get everyone in the resource or thinking critically about the resource. And then you're then supposed to lead that discussion with the class through the rest of the week. Um, the following weeks, weeks two through eight, all of the, the extra credit resources are all going to be videos. And they, some of them could be 10 minutes, some of them could be an hour, but they're based on different topics. And in the course, on the course overview, I provide you a list and links to where those extra credit resources are if you want to go ahead and pre-sign up for, like, let's say you really want to do the one that happens in week four or something like that. You can go ahead and sign up for that now. But I'm, I, again, uh, it's not required for you to do the extra credit, but I would just would encourage all of us to at least check them out, it, even if you're not doing the extra credit, at least check them out, because I think there are gr great resources to extend our learning within this course. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to jump into the course and show us the activities page and show us where we're going to be doing these assignments. And then I will conclude the video by talking to you a little bit more in depth about our executive brief brainstorming this week. So here's our activities page, which can, which can be found at the end of our learning module in the last heading. So you just click on this activities link here, and it then brings up the activities page. And I'm going to move our table of contents off so I can have more room. But the activities pages are broken up into three sections. We have a reading section, which gives you a link to the readings that you're supposed to be doing from our painting the web book. Then we have a discussion section. And at the bottom, we have assignments. And then, oh, there's a fourth section I forgot, extra credit. Um, the main thing I want to show you is just that here within these areas, like, for example, this discussion area, I outline specifically um, how and exactly what I'm expecting from you for these assignments, for these discussions. And your grade will be based on your accomplishment of these things. So at minimum, if you do steps you know, 1 through 10, um, it doesn't necessarily matter necessarily how well, how well you did steps one through ten, but if you if I can tell that you've at least tried, in my mind, based on my personal teaching philosophy, you've you, you're going to do just fine on the assignment because I'm not I'm here to basically encourage you and guide you through your learning. I'm not going to be nitpicking you. Um, only thing I'm going to be nitpicking you on in terms of your grade is if you actually deliberately didn't do something that the assignment asked you to do. So go through this process and I outline specifically how I expect your learning to be. Um, and I'm going to talk more about these uh, discussion questions in just a second, but for example here we have a template that you're going to be able to download where you're going to be filling out things like your site name, the purpose of your website, things like that. That's just to kind of get everybody in the class discussing about the term projects. And then down here specifically below I ask you to share three links for three similar websites and I give you an example like let's say my website was Dave's Pizza Kitchen. So I'm going to share three pizza websites that in my mind are similar to what I would be wanting to do for my term project. And then I need to talk with the class about 
why those are good examples. And then at the end of every single discussion question, you always have to ask the class a question about something that you said. If you don't, all we're doing is just kind of saying, hey, here's an idea, but then there's no real discussion going on. So I'm definitely going to be answering all the questions that you post to the class, and it's also a requirement for us all to be participating with each other and answering their questions that we all share. So basically you would get full credit for your participation this week if I can at least tell that you've done your due diligence in terms of participating. You've answered some questions and you've asked some questions. I'm not expecting you to answer every single person's questions from the course. Um, so if you jump into the forum, five people have responded and you could tell that three of them have already been, people in the class have already been talking with them. I would say, but then there's two other students who no one's answered their questions. You know, it would be helpful for you to go and participate with those students as well. Um, then at the very bottom, I list the uh, assignments. This week, like I just said, you're just sharing with me your term project from 2150. And then I list the extra credit, which you can actually jump here to this link and it'll take you to that, that blog post where you can learn about Dribble and his creative process for creating that website. So now let's talk about where you actually submit those assignments. So I'm going to expand my table of contents and you'll see down here, when you're ready to participate in those discussion questions, you click on week one discussions. And this is going to jump you here to the category of those discussion questions. So you're going to be coming in here at different points in the week and you're going to see that there are 15 messages here in the student introductions area. You may see that there are other questions here uh, that people have already started discussing in these two areas. So then you would either you jump into the area and maybe answer someone's question or you would create a message yourself. One of the key, one of my big pet peeves within the course is for students not being specific with their subject lines. So, for example, here I'm talking about similar sites. So I tell you specifically how I want your subject line uh, to be stated for your discussion post to make it most effective for students getting in and learning about it. So, for example, in the similar sites, I'm gonna you're gonna put the name of your site. So it could be DaysPizzaKitchen.com, and then you might say similar sites to DaysPizzaKitchen.com, something like that. And then here within the message field, you know, we're all web designers, so I would expect you to utilize this use HTML feature. So just by clicking that checkbox there, you can use the HTML. So you could use uh, whatever web editor that you're currently using. Some of you are going to be using uh, Text Wrangler if you're on a Mac. A lot of you might be just using Notepad++. Some of you might be using Dreamweaver. So you can actually copy and paste that code right here within this discussion field, and then it's going to render it. Uh, in a published view uh, in code. You can also click on the create and en enable HTML creator which would allow you to um, I'm sorry which would allow you to actually publish um, what you write in here and it will it'll write the code for you. But us as web designers you could even come in here and just start coding uh, this all yourself by hand. It's, it's totally up to you. You also have the ability to add attachments as well. Uh, but again very specific I would expect all of you to be coding here, enable HTML, editor, descriptive subject lines, and then be sure you utilize the preview. Preview your post, make sure it looks right, and if it doesn't, go back and, and fix it. I'm going to leave this page, and then all of your assignments, if there's an assignment, it's going to be found within this area as well. So I'm going to expect you to submit to me your assignment by adding an attachment. This is your documentation for 2150 and then talking to me about your assignment within this area as well. So you'll talk to me about the things that you're thinking of changing and how you per perhaps might want to update your documentation or maybe everything's good to go. Totally up to you. And then you'll hit submit. And then like I talked about in the previous video, I'm then going to download all of your submissions, review it, and I'm going to give you personalized feedback right here within the course. So you're then going to find that in the, sub in the graded area of your assignments area. And then at the very end of every uh, section of the activities, we also have an opportunity to ask the class questions. You can ask me questions publicly, ask the class questions publicly, or just chat here on the open forum. And I have provided you guys that on the home page, a link to this on the home page, and here at the end of every week, just to kind of remind us this is the best way to ask questions publicly, where everybody in the class can benefit from your questions, and everyone can, in this learning community, we can all answer them. So again, like I said, let's just talk briefly about um, a little, little bit more specifically about those two major discussion assignments because that that constitutes a good percentage a final great percentage of the course so the first discussion question as we do our, our preparation for executive brief brainstorming next week um, I've given you a document template to work within it's an HTML template that I created it's basically just a table um, that you can then fill out let the letting the class know uh, what your name of your site would be 
and I would also check to make sure that that URL is actually available. So um, don't be sharing with us because so, this is basically I want you guys to have the same experience that an actual web designer or a firm w would have. So um, definitely check to make sure that that URL is available by going to uh, s some sort of domain, who is search or something, to just to make sure that, that URL is available. Um, so we need to know the name of the site and um, you know dot com dot org stuff like that. And definitely don't use any special characters, spaces, stuff like that. And then uh, let us know the purpose of the website uh, in terms of what the purpose of it is for the clients and for the users. What type of content is found on the website? So just describe for us briefly the different types of content that you're going to be finding on, on, on your site. Who are the intended users? But the main things I'm really interested in, the class is interested in, is what are the three main tasks those users would need to perform? Because that's really going to leverage the whole design of the site to make sure that those users' needs are met. And we're going to be talking more about that later on in the course. And then, of course, as with all of our discussion questions, ask the class a, a substantive discussion question to help you move forward with the project. Okay? Um, now, the next one is similar sites. This here is, remember, as I shared before, like imagine if my website was davespizzakitchen.com. I'm then going to share three exemplary examples of pizza websites that I would hope that my site that I'm developing would embody. And this is really a key thing for us uh, to do right now. And it's something that I would hope that as you leave this class and leave Webster, that this is a strategy that you would use when you're working with future clients because they're coming to you to design a website because they don't know the first thing about creating a website. And they often don't know what's effective or efficient um, online. And that's where you as the web designer could come in and make those types of recommendations. So let's say you're making a pizza website and then you were to say, hey, what do you want your website to look like? They might not have a clue, you know. Um, so that's why you, as a designer, can kind of come to them with some examples. Ideally, you would actually come to them with examples of their competitors. So maybe if I, my website was davidspizzakitchen.com, maybe there was a, a Joey's Pizza Hall that is you know a couple miles away, and I wanted to have a website that would really attract users to my menu and give them my phone number so they would be ordering pizza for me rather than Joey's Pizza Hall or something like that. So you could actually show him the competitors' websites and then you can talk through with them, you know, how can you leverage what they, how can you do what they did well, and how can you capitalize on what they did well and make sure that you avoid what they did wrong. Um, so that's just kind of going to open lines of communication with you and your client to help brainstorm with actual examples, because the clients are going to be able to look at actual examples and give you opinions of them by not giving them examples that everything's just so conceptual. Oh, I want this website to look and do this. You know, they, it's really hard for them to do those types of things. So. Another thing I keep mention here is the, the need to make sure that you're finding similar sites. Don't say that your website's going to be a pizza website, but then share with the class, oh, I really you know, like this Walmart website right here. Uh, because obviously Walmart's website's a completely different type of website. It's, this type of website that you would make for Walmart is completely different than the type of website that you would make for Dave's Pizza Kitchen. Um, now I will say that if you show, let's say you are doing davespizzakitchen.com, and then you were to share an example, like say, you know what, I know Walmart is not um, the same type, but here's this one aspect on Walmart's website that I really feel would work for davespizzakitchen.com, and you talk through that with us. If you do that, that's fine, but don't share with us, because uh, we need to be able to compare apples to apples. We need to have similar, like I said, I said similar here for a reason. We need to have similar sites for us to look at. And then keep in mind, these three sites, you're going to be going back to them each week and thinking through what are some different design and development attributes of those sites that you hope to embody in your site. Um, so whenever I see students that are coming up with uh, des design and development things for their sites that's just totally out of left field, I, I can always say, hey, let's go back to your, your similar sites that you shared with the class in week one and talk through how this specific design attribute doesn't really make sense because it's not found anywhere on these three different sites. So this, these, these sites here will really help us wrap our mind around exactly what we should be having in our website. So again, they should be apples to apples. They should be comparable. And then um, the last thing of every discussion question is make sure that you ask the class a substantive, a substantive question that will help you move forward with uh, your project. So in terms of these websites, maybe you could say something like, what do you see on these three similar pizza websites that you think that I really need to include on my 
in my website? What's something that you would really think would be effective or efficient for our users um, from these pizza websites? Something like that. And then uh, the class and I will answer those questions. And as I conclude all of my lecture videos, be sure that you let the class or I know if you have any questions. I never want anybody in the class to ever feel like they didn't, they had a question that they never got answered. So let the class or I know if you have any questions because we're this basically I'm hoping to inspire us all to be this large learning community. We're all here learning together um, to meet the ultimate goal of having um, these really cool websites at the end of the course that I hope that we're all uh, proud of and will be a showcase piece for our professional portfolios. Um, so again, let the class or I know if you have any questions and I hope you guys all enjoy learning within the course this week. Have a good day.